Hi, this is Sally Metting, and today we're going to paint a little landscape. This is a place called Elm Bank near me. If you can see it without the glare. It's a fall scene, um, lots of nice shadows. And I first off started by putting some masking fluid on the paper, and this is spattered on. And I'll show you how I do that. This one is dry and I'll show you how I do that. I have a very small brush. This is a, a number two refill brush from Dick Blick. It's a um, size two, as long as it has a reasonable point. I cover it in soap and I mash the soap through the all the bristles to make sure that it's protected from the masking fluid. The masking fluid I use is a combination of these two, a PBO drawing gum and liquid mask from Richardson, the Shiva series. This one's more economical, but it's kind of pink. And this one I like, but it's really kind of too, too blue. So I mix the two together and end up with something that resembles a gray. And I put it into a little dropper bottle and put a little bit out and my brush is covered in soap and this was the master's I've forgotten what master's brush cleaner and it also takes out phthalo blue and things so I find it's useful to have to protect brushes and to get it out of my clothes and then I'm going to literally tap my brush or even do some sort of flicking and I'll zoom in so that you can see that a little bit better. Let's move it down. And this is going to be suggesting my leaves. And I'll do a little bit at the bottom where there's some other leaves as well. And anything that's a larger clump, I might put in, using the tip, just a few little suggestions. And there is a little house way back here. And then, of course, you have to wait for that to dry. So before I ruin my brush, I, wa I wipe it out on tissue, wash thoroughly with water, make sure that's clean, then my brush lasts a bit longer, and then I actually reload it with soap. That helps it keep a point and if I forget to put soap on one time it's protected. The massing is dry and you know when it's dry when you touch it and it doesn't come off on your hands. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, I'll put the picture up in the corner here so you can see it. First thing I'm going to do is to mix up some colors. I use a Frank Webb palette and my colors are arranged mostly yellows, reds, some neutrals, a couple of convenience greens, blues, and I've got a purple or two. Um, but mostly I use just six main colors, two reds, two blues, two um, yellows. So I'm going to start making up the color of the um, leaves to begin with. So this is Azo Yellow, it's Windsor Newton, so it's Windsor Yellow. I'm going to use some Indian yellow, a more, much warmer yellow. I'm going to add a little burnt sienna to that so it's not too, too bright. And I may just for grins add a little bit of French ochre because it's already somewhat neutralized and perhaps a little quin gold. So those will be my colors to start with, and I'm going to put them around where I've dotted in some of the leaves. The reason that I've masked these is these are the lightest areas. So now I'm going to literally scumble in where I'm seeing some of these leaves. And I'm going to use my misting bottle to keep it somewhat soft but keep some areas dry. I want to soak the whole paper so I'm just putting them in as I see those shapes 
and then I will put in the sky behind that as best as best I can manage and then I'm gonna also do some spattering as well and I'm seeing lots of it down here so get those colors in as well a little mist so it softens those edges for me and I'll probably have to do more than one layer with this anyway it might be a little too much burnt sienna so just soften it away okay I started with the yellow first because it's our lightest color And there's lots of yellows, so I guess I can pop those in as well. So there's some yellows down here of leaves that have fallen. Just get a little bit in there and also under here. So it's somewhere between wet and dry when you mist. And this is a little cheap misting bottle, you know, like you would use for contact lenses. And I'll do a little bit of spatter down here. So we're getting some different kinds of edges, soft and hard. Okay, so now I need to think about popping in some sky. And I'm going to be using a combination of French ultramarine blue and some manganese blue hue which is actually phthalo blue green shade but it doesn't stain it's um, from Daniel Smith and now I'm going to put in the blue but there's a gradation of color from darker to lighter so I'm going to get in with some of these darker ones and putting it in between these little holes and of course I'm going to get a little bit of mingling of color but I'm not going to worry too much about that and then as I come down the page it's going to get much lighter so we're going to end up doing a graded wash getting lighter and lighter some more and more water until I get to the top of the hill and then I could put the trees on top of that so now I'm just gonna scumble around this techniques called scumbling where you're essentially doing a scribble stroke and it leaves somewhat of a painterly feel try not to leave too many whites because I have protected it with masking so I can be more conscientious with filling them in okay so that's my sky in and some of the colors are mingling into the sky and I'm on a little bit of a slope so I will make it a tad flatter so it won't move quite as much And so I'm getting some greens where they interact and I kind of like that effect. So now I'm actually wanting to work my way down the picture. I find that's the most logical way to do things. So I'm going to go in and put in some of these greens and a lot of this is going to be somewhat underpainting. So to mix my green I like to do a warm yellow and phthalo blue green shade and if you don't like mixing your greens um, you could end up using some sap green which is pretty similar so I'll probably mix and mingle those and I'm going to get this color along here but I actually want to touch a little bit of the edges so that it will bleed up a little bit and give me a soft edge in the background 
and I'm going to go a little bit brighter so I don't have the same green all over and put a little lighter area there where the sun is landing on the lawn and a little darker over here a bit more phthalo so this is the, going to be the underpainting I'm probably going to end up doing this a second time let's get a little bit more warm yellows down here and pass that green through so it doesn't look like the grass ends right here the tree will be darker here so I'm not worrying about that at the moment and I'd like to get in some soft trees in the background but they're much more coniferous so let me clean up my palette and to make a coniferous green I like to do burnt sienna and thalo blue it gives me a really deep rich dark and you can add a little French ultra marine to it if you want to go even deeper but I'm just going to suggest a few little trees here we're putting in some triangular shapes so it's just a hint and I guess for completion I should suggest that there may be a couple through there okay let's continue working our way down so now I'm going to think about the um, the tree and the uh, stone area and that's looking like a very grayed brown so I'm going to be using French ultramarine blue and burnt sienna because those make beautiful gray just got to get the proportions exactly right there's the gray but I actually want it a little browner so sometimes I make the gray and then take it back again so that it's somewhat browner so now it's more of a yeah it's a, a neutralized brown so that I'm going to use for my stone color over here and may make it just a hair lighter on the top and that suggests where the stone is and then I'm going to put in some more um, foliage suggestion and then pop in that I'm not sure if it's a bench or a bench or a fence so I'm using some burnt sienna, some Indian yellow, and just suggest some of these, uh, more of these leaves down here, starting to dry. And this has all become very soft in here now, so I'm going to be ready to put in some more colors up there soon. And actually maybe this is a good opportunity. So into the area which is sort of still somewhat damp it hasn't dried all the way yet I can drop in some more fall foliage and even a little more spatter to suggest and then this is where any little spots which are left over can be easily filled in so I'm wanting to do some more of those down here too. So these are the piles of leaves that get blown to the edge of the road as you enter this conservation land area. And then we'll get in the road. So I'll do a little spattering here. Okay. Maybe put a little little bit of dark up there. 
more variation repetition with variation now we could put in a little bit of orange and I was using transparent pyrrole orange here because it is so transparent or you can use any yellow and add I like to add quinacridone rose to it and that's pretty similar to that just dilute it out a bit so that we've got more variation so I'm doing more drumstick spatter okay so now let's think about the road and it's a little bit grayer than the stone wall which we've suggested so it's just a case of making the color a little bit grayer so I'm going to start putting that in here now and I'll wet some of it first some areas are drying already and I'm seeing quite a bit of blue especially here in the shadows get some of those in and then there's a shadow of the wall along here and I like that little bit of dry brush I think that looks kind of cool so I'll connect it with my leaves and soften that that's looking a little bit hard I don't need to go all the way to the front here it just gives you a lead into the picture you don't have to paint to all the edges so now I'm just softening off some edges here and I can start thinking about that little bench or whatever it is fence he's a little darker so I'm doing burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue just get that popped in there and he's gonna bleed but that's okay I'm not gonna worry about it a little bit more blue in there because I'm seeing some blue too okay so we can s probably start thinking about drying it and this is kind of like my underpainting if you like and I think I will drop in just a suggestion of some of these um, soft shadows from the leaves from a tree that's off to the far right here just a suggestion don't want to overdo it okay so that's probably where I'm going to stop for stage one if you like and then I'll dry it and then I'll come back in and do a little bit more okay now it's dry and you can see it's quite a bit lighter and I've put a little bit more uh, masking fluid on a few of the spots and a bit a bit more spatter on the trees and down here and I'm now going to do another layer and get the tree trunks in as well I did see that I got sky where I'm wanting tree trunk up here so as this painting is completely dry I dried it for about five minutes on a slow hair dryer and you can and then it needs to feel like it's room temperature when you touch it if it still feels cool you know uh, then that's when you you've got to dry it a bit longer here I'm just going to wet a little section here and just lift this blue back a tad I just don't want my tree trunk to look darker at the top than at the bottom so this is called a level lifter and it's reasonably gentle on the paper you can see I've lifted that back just a little bit and hopefully when I put in the trunk it will you'll you'll never know that I had a bit of sky in the way 
Okay, so first off, I'm going to do a little bit more of my yellows, more spattering for more layers and more depth in my trees. So I'm going to repeat that. And the more layers you do, the more depth it appears to have. So the first layer looks kind of wishy-washy now. And um, this is like the mid-tones that are going on. Most of these are in the light tones, except for this sort of bench fence thing. And now we're going to be starting to get into some of the darker values. And that's how light or darker color is. It's also called top tones uh, in England, but in America it's called values. So the tree trunk is really dark and the dark against the light of the leaves is what gives you the lovely contrast. And I'm wanting to try and suggest that that is what's going on in my painting by doing the darks behind the lights. So I'm just gonna do a bit more of this and a bit more spatter and increase the intensity. Two layers are more vibrant than one in general. And dropping in varying colors is nice. So I'm gonna get a little bit more oranges in here now. And I can push the color more than I'm actually seeing in the picture. That's artistic license. You don't have to follow it to the T. I get a few of those down here. Repetition with variation. Okay, so I've got some of those going in. Now I'm thinking about the color of my tree trunk, which is going to be a grayed um, brown again. So burnt sienna plus French ultramarine blue. And I'm wanting to go towards the gray blue on the side that is in the shadow. The light is coming from the right hand side. So this side of the tree is going to be much lighter than this side of the tree. So we'll start off by getting in some of these darker values and just going over some of the masking. And I can leave a few little spots, just a few extra leaves that may be there. And they'll be harder edged. I think the tree actually comes down a little bit around this stone, whatever it is, wall beginning. Actually, it's part of a bridge. So I'm just getting some of these values in. And I'm going to put some warms on this side, because this is where the sun is coming from and put more blues on this side where the shadow is the most prevalent. So we can get those going through and repeat this part up here. Go back to the mid gray. It's getting a little dark. And get some more lights in on that side where it's catching the sunshine. So we don't want to see the entire tree trunk because then that looks like it's in front of all the leaves. Well, the leaves are only on the back side of the tree, which looks a little odd. So that's why I'm sort of weaving through it and doing the little bit of masking helps with that so that we can do it step by step. So now I'm going to put in a couple here, leaving a few little spaces. Jump that little section there so this patch of leaves looks like it's in front. And then maybe, oh, it bled into my little dots here. That's okay, just a few. And if that's too much, that one may be too much. Just blot him out gently with a paper towel. So that's suggesting that there is a branch going around the corner and kind of helping to bring your eye around the picture. It's also a compositional tool, as well as being something that actually nature put out there. So I'm just putting in a little bit more blues. And there are some branches coming in from another tree, which is out of the picture. So I don't want to make those too dark, 
but just want like to suggest where some of those are. A little bit lighter, I don't want to get them too dark. Oh, that might be a trunk going off in the background, which is usually a little bit lighter, suggesting it is in the back. So there may be a little something there. And if I'm going to go to some more smaller branches, I would probably go to a rigger brush or a script liner. It's got long um, bristles and it has a big snap to it. It's usually fully synthetic. Um, at least I find that's the one that's got the most personality. It does the most flick to it. So then you can get in your um, suggestion of some, some branches that are smaller and just have to think about you know where you are in the picture and if you're at the front make them a little bit darker and if you're in the background uh, make them a little bit lighter and just make sure that they go from thicker to thinner and skip some parts to sort of weaving this through the through the piece just gradually building up the, the tree texture. So we're starting to get into the mid-tones now and this is going to require another layer over the top. So while that's drying I'm going to start thinking about this part here. The um, undercolor, the underpainting for the grass is already in. So I'm going to enhance that by doing another layer which will give it more richness and intensity. So I'm going back to, I can mix my green or I can use my sap green. I'm wanting to get more of a yellowy green up in this section because I'm seeing that the sun is hitting this area more. Define that hill a little bit. And then as I go further across, I'm going to add more vibrant greens and then drop in the shadows again. So it might seem repetitious to do something twice, but this is how you add depth and dimension to your piece, or at least I find so. So I'm looking to see where the grass is weaving through here. And I need to go a little darker, so I'm going to add some French ultramarine blue to the darker shadows now. And I'm doing those while the paint is still damp. So this, I'm doing this via sort of a chunking method, so it doesn't seem overwhelming that you can do things in little sections and not have to jump around and wonder, oh, is that wet enough? Oh, is that too dry? How do I know? I'm, I'm just taking it step by step and making, making my life easier. So those are my shadows, and that will probably need one more passage over it. Now, my little hill at the back here is probably looking a little bit too hard. Anything in the distance tends to be soft, so I'm just going to run water along the edge there with a somewhat thirsty brush. If you use too much water, you're going to form a bloom by pushing the, the wetter area into the drier area. So now I'm going to start defining these trees here and they will meld into that soft edge. And I think I'm going to soften this edge just a little bit too. Just because it's further into the background. It's in the middle ground. So I'm hoping that doesn't form a bloom. If you do start to form a bloom and you don't want it, you can go in and pop in a bit more color. That's a tad had more concentrated and that will push it back again so it's it's getting to know how much you can add and when to add it that you might not want to have a bloom so now I'm gonna get a 
suggestion of a tree probably need a little bit darker and a little bit richer so I'm making up my burnt sienna and phthalo blue green shade and a little bit more concentrated and it is a little bit wet here from when I was working but you can see that we're getting some darker trees in but I'm leaving a few lights because that's the background through the trees and there's a little house in here so I'm wanting to vary the values a little bit so I'm going to put a little bit darker blue on this side because I know the light's coming from this side okay and now the next tree is a little bit grayer so I'm going to add a tiny bit of the complement to it and that is I just added quinacridone rose just so that all the trees aren't identical and it looks like there's a trunk that comes right through there this is softly going to join into this bit here and I may need to even go a tiny bit darker just suggest those middle bits okay and I'm going to change up the green again. I'm going to add a little bit of sap to it so that again it's not the same and I'm doing that sort of scumbling stroke so it's wetter at the bottom and drier up the top. And it looks like there might even be some these are mostly coniferous trees, but now I'm seeing at the background here there are some more deciduous trees, so let's pop those in. They're in the background, so I'll weave it in. And there's probably poison ivy growing along the front of here, or some other foliage, so repetition to get some of those oranges over there just soften that out okay now we need to get in some deeper darks and this is kind of juicy wet at the moment so I need to be cautious when I'm adding a darker color so it needs to be thicker if it's thicker in consistency more like the mixture of cream then this is a little sap green and a little French ultramarine blue and it's pretty thick compared with this one which is really watery and because it's thicker it is not going to move very far it pretty much stays where you put it as you can see but it still gives me soft edges so I'm looking at that dark shadow and there's a little bit of it coming over here from those parts I'm also seeing a nice deep dark around the, the house so those may be bushes in front of bushes so even more depth going in and then there's trees off the picture here that are casting a shadow on the paper so I'll sort of scumble those in as they come across and another one down here a little bit shorter and let's vary the colors a little bit don't want it to be all the same and that will define my shadows somewhat and I probably will end up doing a little more to them so in stages so we're putting in pretty much the mid-tones now of the painting. So there's that shadow going off there and there, but it's a little bit drier over here, so I'm just going to moisten it. So those are the shadows coming in from the left. Okay, so I'm going to let that incubate, cook, and then I'm going to work in this section 
and everything is still really light and the tree has dried but it's still not dark so it will need one more one more coat and I think I'm going to do the road again and particularly start to put in the blues that I'm seeing in the shadow part um, on the on the ground cast from the trees outside the picture so let's start making up a gray going to clean my palette really fast. I usually use just a paper towel that's cut into quarters and that's what I use to tap my brush dry as well. So let's make up a grey again, burnt sienna and French hotch marine blue. And this time I'm going to add a little bit of quinacridone rose. I'm trying to get to a more of a purplish gray so I think that will suffice and I'm seeing that it's definitely lighter there so uh, and lighter here so there's a gradation going on going um, from bluer to warm so cooler to warmer so I'll try and get that in at the same time so I'm going to put in a little bit more of the yellowy oranges towards the front, mix that with my greys. So we're getting these colors at the front here now. And as we work our way back, I'm going to start getting in these much darker values. Much more blues are going to go in now. These shadows coming across got to connect them to make sure that they're in the right place. So that's the actual stone thing. Along here is going to be quite dark. I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine violet. It's just a tiny bit more violet than what I had. Make that edge a little wiggly. Keeping these shadows going fairly horizontally. They actually form a, a fan shape, somewhat like that. They're not perfectly all horizontal. This one is actually sort of at about 8.30 o'clock, if you can imagine. And then this is at 9 o'clock. And then these ones way up here, maybe almost at 10 o'clock. So just taking that into account helps you to get the positioning of the sun. Okay, and I need to get this nice deep dark one here, the 8 o'clock one, but my mixture is too light and too weak, so I need to make it thicker. And I need a little bit of violet in it too. Okay, so now I can get this shadow in here, blend that color over here softly. and get in some other values within that. Still need some more blue, I think. Really see quite a bit of blue in this area. So it probably will need yet one more coat to get to the blueness that I'm wanting. So it's just literally horizontal strokes at this section. And now getting to more the eight o'clock down here. This is a little bit wet, so I may have to wait for that to dry to get a little slightly harder edge. Or I can put in slightly thicker mix and then it's not gonna bleed quite so much. These values have gotta go quite dark. So while I've got some darks in my brush, I think I'm going to make the wall a little darker too, especially on the dark side, this side, and it will be reflecting some of the colors around. So we'll get that in. I'm going to drop in a little bit of orange for reflected light of the leaves that are probably, oh, that's my dry brush get some oranges 
underneath that and then drop in the greys over the top leaving that little top section where the light is and make this a little ragged at the bottom where the leaves connect and then there's some shadows on here as well seeing a little orange reflected here might as well put it in if you can see it put it in so that little bit of orange in there just it just makes the shadows that just that bit more interesting so I'm just trying to straighten that out a little bit okay all right so that's suggesting the wall the end of this has got to definitely have that slightly orangey glow to it as well all right this is getting to bleed a little bit too much so if it's doing that i'm going to dry my brush really dry my brush and then this is where you can actually control the bleed a little bit by doing a thirsty brush. I can see that my shadow is bigger here than it is there so this needs to be flaring out a little more here and then these dappled lights again I think I want to go a tiny bit more violety. So permanent rose, quinacridone rose, or ultramarine violet. I like ultramarine violet because it granulates. And I'm getting in some of the directionality now of these soft little leaf shadows. So as this starts to dry, I can drop in a few of those. Just suggesting more and more of the detail that's happening. And the shadows do actually connect over here too. So I'm going to repeat the shadows, but they're not going to be gray because they're on the orange leaves. So I'm going to make them a brownish and add some of the gray to it. So it's a much more orangey color to extend the shadows. So. I didn't need to overlap it. So this is me doing the shadows now over the top, connecting to this. This is the shadow of this big tree. So we can start getting that in. And then there's some shadows from this bench and shadows from other trees behind here. Just suggest a few of those. And maybe even back in there. And then this is all in shadow here, but there is a passage of much warmer light coming through just in front of where this stone is casting, the stone wall is casting this, um, this shape here, which is kind of blended into that. But this darker shape here is, is that reflection. So I'm wanting this lighter section here. So I've got to continue my shadow. And this is all the leaves. And that's that lighter spot where the light's coming in between the two. So I just drop that in real fast. Scumble those in. Drop in some more deeper oranges. Might be a little bit too much and a few of the browns Could let some of those bleed into there but trying to keep that little area open so even though i had some white areas open there i've filled them all in now you can get one coming through there okay so there is quite a light part here but i am seeing a few shadows whoops not in brown though need to get those little fellas in so we can get those up here and they join up to those. 
a little bit more purpley. The shadows all don't have to be exactly the same colour because they probably aren't. So that's going off into the road over there. Okay, so these have got a little bit out of hand and I need to shape those a little better and have it so that it's got more horizontality. It's feeling I like a dop 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 and I shouldn't do that. It needs to be more in this direction to help those shadows feel like tree branches that are growing upright on the edge of the paper that we can't see. So I'm just going to drop in a few other colors. Good opportunity to do so. So just touching up those areas. Okay, so this area now here needs to be much lighter. So I'm going to get back into the oranges. The shadows are not the same color crossing the leaves as they are crossing the road. Let's make sure I stay in line there. So that's a tree. This tree is outside the picture. This is the wall and then this is my tree of that one. So I guess we can define him just a little bit better. Not, not quite that color, a little bit blue. I want to really push these blues because the blues are the complement of the orangey leaves. And that's what really wowed me about this scene. So just using French Ultramarine Blue pretty much by itself now. I'm dropping those while this is still damp into the shadows. Letting those shadows disappear. Let's suggest a few branches or two. Okay. So I'm still not liking this one, but it needs to go darker and hopefully it won't bleed now especially if I make a thicker mix because it needs to go darker anyway. And I'm going to put a little bit of reflected light in it as well. There's a bit of orange in it just for respite for the eye. Makes more interest. So take that color around the corner into these areas. So I've got a bit of this line here. I'm not sure I'm wild about that. Oh, that's my special white I need to protect. <sighs> Don't want to go in there. Bah. Smack fingers. Okay. So I'm feeling that's looking better now. All right, so it might be time to do a little bit more spattering on my leaves. For even deeper values and repetition. So I've dried it for the second time and I started to soften a few edges with a little small scrubber brush that might have got a little harder than I would have liked. And this one that was giving me a bit of a bit of grief um, I'm just very gently scrubbing with these extremely small bristles. I don't know if you can see on here, but they're very short and they're, and they're pretty soft um, and there's lots and lots of them. And I can clean up any edges that don't look quite as nice as I would like, just with a little bit of water and very gently skidding over the surface. And sometimes I can just leave the water there. I don't even need to touch it. I'm just softening away any hard edges that I'm not completely happy with. This is kind of like the watercolor eraser. And um, those two little bits are wet. I'm going to not worry about those for right now, but I'm going to remove all the masking fluid. And that's going to make a big change. And the masking fluid can be removed with... Um, a rubber cement pickup. Um, it's kind of made out of natural rubber, I think. And, or you can take some masking tape 
and roll it around your finger sticky side out and you can actually then rub over the painting. I find that that still gives me friction burns. I still feel that on my finger. So I prefer to use this fella, even though it gets to look a little grubby. You have to be sure your painting is completely dry. And then you get these lovely masking fluid boogers, as they're called. Okay, so now for the final details, and I need to get my tree much darker. I'm looking at my, my photo for a second, and I can see that the valleys are really dark in the tree behind the leaves. This bench is quite dark. These shadows are particularly dark, and the wall is fairly dark also, and these few little ducks here in the shadows so it's just pumping those up a little more than I've got them and popping in a few of those branches and hopefully we're on a home run now so I'm going to also get this to go back into shadow more it's too it's too bright still it doesn't suggest it, it although I've got some light coming through here it still isn't dark enough so what I need to do is to go over it with a glaze and a glaze is a thin layer of color and essentially it's like a second wash but it's usually just modulating what's underneath making it a little darker or warmer or cooler whatever you need and that's what I'm going to be doing so I call it a glaze though some people still call it a second wash so this needs to have the purples over it but I'm going to keep it sort of brownish purpley so I'm going to use burnt sienna and I'm going to mix up an actual violet this time quinacridone rose and some French ultramarine blue and if you add the French ultramarine blue to that then I get this lovely muted um, brownish warm violet and I think if I pop that over this section here it's going to push this light area further back in space and then make this look like it's in the shadow of the wall that's my intention anyway so I've got some lights and mediums and darks in there because we did some masking and different colors and spattering to suggest all the different leaves so let's give that edge a little bit up and down so now that's making sure that that lights really coming in in between there and then I probably need to glaze the wall as well especially this back side of this tall stone post getting another dark in there and you can do as many layers as you like now but I find three is usually my minimum um, so that definitely needed to go darker probably still needs to go darker still it's in the shadow of the it's in the light there in the reflection of my lamp okay so i think i'm going to define this uh, another line here and down here so i'm going to bump those up a little bit because the wall seems to be divided into these separate sections which may not be so easy to see from back there, but there actually are section, sections in that wall. Okay, so I'm, while I've got this shadow color, I'm going to pump these up a little bit more. The back sides of these vertical posts and put a little bit more blue across the top here of this bench or fence or whatever it is so by doing three layers on it it has a richness now and i'm going to repeat my shadow oh no i'm going to do a tree next so I'm going to make up, I think I'm still going to use that same color actually, but I'm just going to add some more blue to it. 
more French ultramarine blue and oh, I probably should not have taken off my masking so quickly because now I have to paint around some of these uh, but maybe that's not all bad okay so now I'm going to swap to a slightly smaller brush back to my rigger this is a number four um, rigger and pick up this deeper color and can get in some other areas that are I'm going to suggest this one coming down through here and okay this one looks like it's going all the way across here connecting from there somewhere that's part of this one it goes down here so we're just filling filling in the details okay so there is a, a branch coming in from another tree it looks like it goes behind and we'll weave him through <laughs> give me one that goes backwards as well this tree has to have all dimensions and this fella too he may go in front so let's make him look like he goes in front there we go all right so I think I'm going to put a few more darks into this and into these shadows and show you how to soften a few edges. I'm finding these are maybe a little bit too hard edged. I'll soften those but I'm going to put a few more blues. I'm going to really push the blues now in my shadows. And blue, blue violet is somewhere where I'm putting it in. So I'm going to be putting it wet on dry even more. It's like a con com combination of paint and doing some loose, almost dry brush. So sort of a dry brush. I'm using these two lines to help bring your eye back up into the picture because this is really leading out. So I want to bring your eye back in. So this is a design element. And where else should I do now? Really, it's just nitpicking the final few details. I think this wall needs to have yet another wash over it of this purpley but a little I'm going to put a little bit more brown in there and then the purples all around the rest even on the top. I don't want to get it too too white there. And capture those shadows again. All right, so I'm going to just soften off the uh, treetops and make those. I thought I was going to like them harder, but I, I don't. So I'm just using my little scrubber brush, scrubby brush. So this is the number two and just softening away some of them. I don't have to do all of them, just some of them, just enough to push it into the distance. Oh, you know what? I forgot that little bit of... There's my little house in there that I was going to put in. That's part of the Unbank house. I forgot about that bit. Okay, so I guess I need to develop that now. And the house is kind of a little bit of a reddish brickish color. So I'll mix that up with a little red and a little brown. 
and pretty light because he's way in the distance and the house is probably in the sun and I'll let that dry and I can zoom in on that so you can actually whoops, see it back in here and I probably need to give it a little bit of a roof just suggesting it and then I think I'm going to nestle it in with a few more darks because it's feeling a little isolated right now so I'm going back to mixing up my coniferous green so that's burnt sienna and thalo blue green shade get some of this really rich deep green and I think I'm gonna yeah there's a little, little bit here that's much darker and if you want to bring your eye to a particular area you need to bring in some contrast so that's what I'm doing with that and now I'm just going to soften that edge away with just clean water and a somewhat thirsty brush so this suggests there's more foliage in front of that foliage and that's okay just more depth and then I'll wait for the house to dry a little bit more and then I might suggest a roof I don't it's probably too small to even consider windows and let me zoom back out again and I think I'm going this is feeling almost like it's too dominant so I think I'm going to do some more um, lighter uh, foliage here to kind of make it not such a big transition so I'm just looking at the photograph I'll zoom in on it again so you can see more detail and put in some of these soft leaves shadows cast shadows over here and then I'll probably soften those with a little misted water just to mush them into the foreground I don't want to make it look like it's got the measles though okay I think I'll add one more tree in there and maybe one more branch okay where's my little mister and I'm going to dry it one more time and then just evaluate if I need a few more darks so I'm doing the very final details now and I've added just a suggestion of a few really dark leaves in here and I've just added a few more and to mush it into the paper you can use your your fingertip no reason why not get a few more darks on the edge here so that your eye doesn't fall off the edge of the paper this is acting as a little block it's again another little compositional useful tip and what else am I going to do I think still a few more branches need to come in and I think a little bit more variation in these leaves but you could go on and on and on nitpicking and I don't not sure that I want to do that but let's zoom in and so you can see that these leaves here look a little bit chiseled out so I'm just going to add some variation in them a little bit just so that they don't feel quite so samey everything's got to have a little bit of detail so that just makes the tree match this part up here and you can still add little more patches of color up here I want to overwork that um, although I'm, I'm I'm actually liking this little section so maybe we'll put a few little 
orange suggestions leaves that are already turning and then further down here um, I masked out a few little areas so I'm going to pop in the odd leaf or two that's blowing around on the road here so I paused for a second after I'd finished those little leaves and realized that this was just too dark and this perhaps too I mean, it was forming this T here which I wasn't happy with so I lightened this area considerably and added some more dappled light these leaves and that helped that feel a little lighter because this became a little bit darker and I went ahead and signed it and what are the last little tweak was I going to do um, I'm thinking I'm gonna bring in a few more little bits of green I've got green in this wedge through here and don't have really any green in the bottom of the painting so I'm just going to scumble a few just to repeat that color up here it's a little bit of sap green and French ultra just a couple of those leaves maybe fell and they didn't turn all the way green just echoing that color it's a good compositional skill what's upstairs has to be downstairs and what's downstairs has to be upstairs in terms of the colors and then the bench I wasn't completely happy with either and I essentially lightened that a little bit and made it look as if the light was landing on it and put some shadows across the top of that bringing that as um, more as my focal point um, to the bench and then the little house way way in the background was going to be my focal point but I kind of forgot about it along the way and now I went back in and did a little bit of play just to suggest a roof and two windows very lightly but I'm thinking that isn't my main focal point any longer and I'm finding that my bench is becoming more my focal area now just because of the way the light is coming through here and I think I did a tiny little bit of extra dark there. So I waited a couple more days and did some more re-evaluation. Re I put another mat, I put a clean mat around it and then I added finally some more leaves here and just nibbled into this edge to soften it a little more. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and if you like my video and want to see more, please consider donating to Patreon at the link below. If you'd like to see some of my artwork, check out my website at the link above and if you have any questions, please contact me at sallymenning at gmail.com.